I'm good. You guys good? I'm great. I'm ready. Sure, yeah. I'm ready. All right. Let me do my bad habit. Oh, yeah. Put your little pack in. That's what you'd ask for. Asked if you needed anything. You said pretzels. So. That's, <laughs> that's, what I, <laughs> that's what I got. Priorities. They're the same. same. I know. I do. Everybody knows if I say pretzels. Pretzels, I mean, Zimpax. And crack it. There we go. <laughs> it's official. I think I'll start with that, actually. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. And Thanks. it was really, you know what? This is going to be fun. I said, hold on. Okay. <laughs> I don't want it to block <laughs> your face there. Why do you just do the same thing? I don't know. Yeah. Like I said, I kept yeah. it where it was at because I didn't want it to be <laughs> too close to me. You're, you're going to use a voice. <laughs> it's project. It's project. It's looking at me funny. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um... Justin, you told me about hope all the time. And when I met Justin, I hadn't met you yet. And I was like, man, I kind of want that. And then I met you, and I was like, I have that. And then now we're doing a relationship one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Talk, talk about toxic relationships and just different things like that. Is, it, is that loud in your headphones? Um, yeah. Is it loud in yours? No. Not no. super, super, but I can still hear you. I got it. Yeah. All right, all right. Mic check, mic check. I hear you better. Everyone okay. hear you better? Yeah. Yeah. Say it again. Mic check, mic check. <laughs> yes. No, one more time. Mic check, mic check. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe do a little tone. Mic, mic, mic check. check. Mic check. Oh, yeah. Mic you're, check. You're a beautiful singer. <laughs> I have all my octaves. <laughs> That's okay. <good>. If you could. <laughs> <laughs> me, 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 yes. me. Yes. Yep. Well, and I knew this would fit with you because you did one called X. Yeah, and relationships. That was my first oh, one. That's I was right. telling relationships. That. Yeah, Hilarious. my play on words. <laughs> Hilarious, by the way. That's a super cool name, relationships. It yeah, yeah, that's clever. Me. I also listened to that one in X, and I was like, Yeah, I like her. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't met you yet, but I'm like, oh, I'm gonna start using cool. that. I'm gonna start like, if someone has a shitty relationship, I'm like, you have a relationship. It's true. It's relationship. Perfect. That is not a relationship. It's a relationship. That's true. It's a real word. Like you think it's a relationship, but it's just, you can see it from the outside. I mm -hmm. feel like it's a relationship. It's not good. Mm -hmm. But they think that they're in something so beautiful and great, and you're like, no, <laughs> yeah. I see what's going on. Yeah. I see like dump him, break up with her. Like come on, man. And they're like, yeah. oh, I'm so in love. And then later they're like, what was I doing? It's like I tried to tell you, but what do you think? Mm. I mean. I guess we'll just do round robin. I don't know. But mine, mine's usually because I'm young and stupid. Yeah. I don't know what I'm actually doing. And everything I learned was from, like, the notebook. No, which is no. And I was like, yeah, it'll feel just like that. <laughs> it'll, and it's like, it does for, like, the little part of it. And then there's, like, actual hard shit that happens. And yeah. you're like, you're not the one we should tackle this together with. Mm -mm. And she's, she's, like, I, she's like, I watched the notebook. Did you watch that? I'm like, I did. She's like... It's not like that. <laughs> and I think it's just we all have this like false idea. Facts. And I, mm -hmm. I think that's why we need to talk about it because everybody has these false notions. One, it's not talked about. I guarantee we grew up. Our parents ain't never parent school. No one ever talks about relationship stuff. It's not talked about probably because they're doing it wrong themselves. You know? And well, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Me it, and my sister talked about this like two days ago. Yeah. And so it never gets talked about. And so... Essentially, we we see what we see on TV. We're like, ooh, sunshine, rainbows. It's gonna be just like that, and you get in a relationship, and yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's not, you know. I also feel like you see your parents or whoever's around you as a relationship model, and that's not always the healthiest thing around you either. No. Like yeah, I know no. for a fact, yeah. my mom tried to file for divorce for my dad twice, and yeah. my dad goes, "No, you're not divorcing me," and she was like, "Okay." You know, like, <laughs> that's, that's not healthy. Okay. You know, that is not healthy. She literally was like, yeah, no, okay, fine. We're going to work this out. And, like, good for you for working it out. Correct. Great to Correct. work it out. Yeah, but yeah. if you actually look at it, that's not healthy. And that's the kind of dynamic I grew up with is thinking, like, no matter how much they fight, no matter how toxic mm -hmm. it gets, yeah, he cheated. Yeah, like, he was an, an addict and abusive. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, now they want to work it out. And it's yeah. so good. And then you get – that's where I've come from is – 
I give so many people a second chance. I'm like, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know that you owe me money. Yeah, I know you put your hands on me. Yeah, I know we fight every day. But it's okay. We can make this work. Why? Because in the back of my mind, I'm like, You've seen parents my parents made it work. Yeah. And so why can't I? Because that was what I grew up with. But that's, that's not actually that's healthy. Yeah, that's it's deep. toxic. Well, I was the same thing. I was laughing because I hate Thanksgiving and Christmas. Pr yeah, probably the most. Fourth of July is fine. But everyone pulls up in their nice clothes. They're like Range Rover. And it's just like, who has, a, who has the most money? And like, who thinks they have a healthy relationship? <sighs> I'm stuck. Oh, no. <laughs> Damn you, Puma. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's just not like how shit actually works. And I would watch my parents compete. And I'm like, we have a red 2001 Pontiac van. And Jason has a Range Rover <laughs> that's brand new. Um, and I just, like, watched my parents put this, like, mask and attitude on. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. So I decided not to. The funniest part is so I married Madden's mom when I was, like, 17, 18. And then within eight months, we were divorced. <laughs> and I was like, Christmas came around. I go, I guess I'm the first one. And then for whatever reason, it was like the, what, the wildfire. Then everything, oh, no. they were like, yeah, Jason cheated on me twice with blah, blah, blah. And then now, <laughs> oh, so now this Christmas. Everything gets exposed after one thing gets exposed. Well, and it was like, oh, we're the goodness. perfect family because no one does this or does that. So we, we don't want to be the one to break it. And I'm like, so sorry I'm here, but no wife this year. And then everyone's <laughs> like, everyone's like, it's safe. We can come out and like stay all shut. Oh, no. And it just like spread. And now it's like, where's half the family? It's like. Right. They're divorced. <laughs> and the kids are like 13. They're like, we knew all along. Yeah. And you're like. It's I, crazy I feel, how people go through a whole lifetime. They're like, yeah. I'm so Faking unhappy. It let's, they make it. Yeah, yeah, let's force this happiness until eventually they're, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say too old to find love, but you have your life established. And then you're like, well, I just wasted my whole life trying to be happy. And now I'm not. Like, right. mm -hmm. And then people, people like, they don't think about the kids. As you just said, like you grew up watching your parents do this toxic cycle of sticking it out and staying together even though you knew they shouldn't. But then mm. now you have the bent back of your head thinking you have to do that. And now you're doing that. And next thing you know, it's like that trauma they put on you. And then now you're passing it on you. And it's a generational thing. Now it's mm -hmm. like every like we just have all these bad generations of mm -hmm. relationships that just keep happening because everyone has these bad ideas in their head that that's what it's supposed to look like. And it's not. Yeah. Well, that's that when I was at uh, the back to school for Madden and he did the polite thing. I was like, you know, I think I've made it safe enough where Madden actually gets to express his emotions. Yeah. Like, he can yeah. determine that school is, like, professional mode. And then outside of it, went to McDonald's, and he's like, oh, and just started getting goofy. And I'm like, okay. And then he goes, Dad, I love you. And I was yeah. like, thank you. And so I remember I, like, hugged my dad. And he's like, you hugged me too much. And I'm like, you're my dad. I'm 10. <laughs> And then my sister would do it, and he'd do it for, like, hours. Oh, I love you so much. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no. And then my sister, <laughs> and my sister she watched Rocket Man yesterday. Oh, and finally. She, she came out, and she goes, I'm sorry. And I go, why? Was it a sad movie? She goes, you remind me of Elton John. Oh. And I go, <laughs> and I was like, the best gay singer ever? And then she's like, yeah, you guys have the same trauma. Like, his, he had a terrible relationship with his dad, and, like, it was the same thing. And I was like, you know, I like that you're observant, but like that, ouch. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I could have gone this way or I could have been the best gay singer ever. <laughs> and well, I'm like. It, it's crazy how the way that you look at your parents too is kind of affects the way you look in a partner. Sometimes mm -hmm. they always say, oh, yeah. you look for your, your mom or your dad and a partner. And I'm kind of like, hell no, I don't. Like, no, I don't. I That's would right. never do that. And then. When I explain some of the people I with, my mom's like, sounds like your dad a little mm. bit. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> like, that's not the person that I was looking for. You know, but you do find those similarities in people. And yep. I find that so crazy that I find my, I'll be honest, I find my dad to be a toxic person. Like, and he knows that. We butt heads all the time. I do find him to be a toxic person. But the fact that I look for him sometimes in oh partners, I'm like, that's crazy. I I'm don't just even. connected dots in my brain. I'm like, dang, my ex is just like my dad. Oh, no. <laughs> like, isn't that weird? How so? They both do drugs. Mm -hmm. mm. 
They're both terrible human beings. They mm-hmm. both lack self-reflection. They're both narcissistic pieces of garbage. The list goes on and on and on, both violent physically and emotionally. It just keeps going. But you saw something. Like you saw something so good at one point. You per- yeah. turn your blinders on to all those bad things. Yeah, like, you've seen it's the good. The notebook. All the, bad. the notebook. There it is. You put your blinders on for people all the time. Like I put my blinders on for so many people. I'm like, oh, you've done drugs. That's okay. I opened three glasses. I apologize <laughs> for it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've, I've had exes, other exes, reach out to me before and be like, don't, do not date this person. He's a bad person. And I'm like, your crazy ex reached out to me. Like, they're so psycho. And then the end of the relationship, I'm like, I should have listened. Oh, my yes. Oh my <laughs> I should have listened. Right. So, <laughs> I'm like, oh, whoops. And then we end up, like, bonding and being friends. Like, oh my gosh, yeah, maybe I should have taken that advice in the beginning. Yeah. But you don't think about it because I'm happy in the start. You don't know what's going to unfold until it's that gaslighting. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have that thing in the back of your head where like, oh, anytime problems come up, I'm going to work through it. Mm -hmm. Well, (laughs) speaking of problems, I don't know how you guys met. (laughs) Oh. Ooh, that's a fun one. How'd you meet? You you tell it. Why me? me? Because you you haven't talked enough, so it's your turn. I know. I'm like, hey, girl, what's up? (laughs) (laughs) We got to get you going. (laughs) Yeah, Carly's like, do it. <laughs> Tell me. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. okay. Um, well, I'm just going to give the basic. And I know that you would give way more detail. I can add Because you it. like to talk. Bounce what? off. Bounce off each other. Let's you like to it. talk, dude? <laughs> what? No, I was on Facebook dating. Perfect. All right. And I actually I'm glad almost, to hear that actually. I, I feel like relationships almost skipped his don't profile. Work. Oh. Not not because I didn't think that he was like cute or anything. He was he was really cute. That's right. But, safe, safe face. Safe face. But, <laughs> yeah, I have to. But his on his bio it was like I'm not interested in any type of relationship. That's not what I'm looking for. And I was like, man, trying to hook up. Like, <laughs> no, like, I was like, even if, like, even if as a person I'm not looking for a relationship, I would still like there to be potential if I'm going to make effort to talk to you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But no, I don't know, something in me, I was like, eh, I could be his friend. And just <laughs> added him. <laughs> Swipe right. Let's go. I'm going to change his mind. I'm going to change this man. Swipe right. <laughs> <laughs> <And> you did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. And then, um... And we, we, we FaceTimed for a few days, and I decided that I was going to come see him. So I drove from Oklahoma on a random day and was like, hey, I'm not going to work. I'm actually coming up to see you. Holy so, shit. <laughs> ah, That's so yeah. cute. That's yeah. awesome. We went axe throwing. We had a really fun time. And First time meeting was just like how you thought it was going to be. It Good. Was, it was very natural. Same I feel like, like that can yeah, always be mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm going to meet you in person and maybe it's just not the same. But FaceTiming is always good. Nowadays, people yeah. like Snapchat, Snapchat, text, no. maybe talk on the phone and let's just meet and then maybe I'll guess no, you. No, we, we <laughs> yeah. FaceTimed enough. And my dad, even when I went up here, he was like, that's how people get killed, Hope. <laughs> oh, like, my God. You need to be careful. <laughs> Here's my location, like, Dad. This is also how you meet people, Dad. Like, yeah. This is I really like century. this guy, and I FaceTimed him so I can pick up his energy enough through that. And right. he's like, okay, well, yeah. And we know Justin. Die. You just have to be near Justin. And I'm yeah. like. Yeah, that's what I said when I came down here. I was like, they just have to meet you. That's it's it. It's okay. It's true. <laughs> yeah, for me, it was Facebook dating is how we met. Mm-hmm. And. At the time, I was talking to like six different girls, and I wasn't trying to do anything. Like I'm reverse, no reverse, backtrack, backtrack, <laughs> backtrack. No relationships. That's where I was at. I was got done it. with oh, them. I, got you. I was tired of all of the, you know, like we were just friends, you know, and, and I was just reaching out, connecting people from different places and stuff like that. Oh, this is when you told me that. Mm-hmm. Like, are you talking like Spokane, Washington, like all over the country? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just to talk, I just love learning people's stories, and so. Oh, I hear it. I think there's some people out there. I think now that there's four microphones aimed. At yeah, it can. <laughs> the wall. It can hear other stuff. But uh, I was talking to multiple people, and I remember my first conversation I had with her. I was, you know, I was, and she was all the way in Oklahoma, so obviously I didn't have any intentions of just hooking up or anything like that. It was right. just, you know, I just wanted to meet people. And first conversation I had with her, that's when I realized, like, man, she's legit. And mm-hmm. not only is she legit, like I'm trying to pull some toxicity <laughs> out of her. I want to hear her toxic, you know. What are your red flags? flags? Yeah, red yeah. flags. Literally I had, me read, red flags. He had me read my whole life story to him, basically. That was my first on the thing. Phone? 
For yep. first conversation. That's what I asked her. I was like, I want to hear awesome. the last one. That's, that's Justin. Though. That's deep. <laughs> So hey, that's tell deep. me your shit now. Yeah. A whole interview. Okay. Get yeah. it out of the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was I the love that. Very first conversation I had with her. Was the very first phone call, I was like, hey, I want to hear your whole life story. Start from the beginning on specifically hard times. And I'm looking for her. I'm looking for resentment. I'm looking for, yeah, so I slashed his tires. He was a piece <laughs> of shit. You know, I'm I looking thought, for. What can I pull just, out of you to make sure yeah, I know exactly. what crazy is going to come with yeah. this? I Thanks. thought it was more, it would be more deeper than that. Because you were like, you know, you have people who lie. So then they would just be like, oh, it's actually great. Nothing's wrong. And you're like, okay, we're done. Because I would just tell you No, like he he would literally ask questions and you'll just be like, uh, and it's FaceTime, so it's not like you can like. I got that. <laughs> yeah, I got Sorry, that. Sorry, that cell service. Up. Cell service like, is terrible. You, he's right literally now. staring at your face, like, "Hey, what's this?" Like, yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. oh, "Okay, well, I guess, I guess yeah, I'm gonna I, tell I was, you." I was looking to pull things out. I was, you know, asking questions like, well, "What did you do when he did that?" You know, like, you know, oh, asking specifically about her trauma and how she reacted, and even when she like talk about ways she regretted, at, oh, I did this and I shouldn't have. Like, you don't hear that a lot. You don't hear people self-reflect and be like, oh, I shouldn't have did this. Yeah, I would honest. never do that again. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I messed up at this time. Like, first time talking to me, she's not hiding anything. Everything's coming out, like, you know. And then even afterwards, like, she had this, like, her ex was like my ex. And we literally fit uh-huh. like a puzzle piece. We fit like a complete puzzle piece together. Oh, we need a high five, too. Yeah. <laughs> group puzzle high five. Pieces. Like, her life was literally very much like mine. So we could relate really close. But I'm I'm looking for resentment and hatred toward mm. you know. But she had nothing but empathy, mm. and just like you, yeah. And so, it, it was just after that, we we, we clicked. And, and God bless you both. I yeah. love you both. No, it's so <laughs> great to hear. I love that. Like well, now it's you guys' turn. Now yeah. You're <laughs> yes. Well, I was gonna just kind of bounce off of what you had said. Is I'm someone. Chase is not someone who's like trying to pull stuff out of me. I'm more of the oversharer, and so I'm like by the way, this is all the stuff that happened. So one thing I had shared with him even just recently that I hadn't opened up about was that I cheated on my ex-boyfriend. Mm-hmm. I'm very open about that. I tell everybody about that. Mm-hmm. I'm so open and honest about that because I was in such Wait, a low place. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, I was like, do not do this right now. <laughs> like I was in a really low place and it was kind of like with my parents. I'm like, I don't think this is going to work. And he's like, we're, this is going to work. We're going to make this work. And I'm like, Okay. I felt stuck. And so I'm like, what can I do to manipulate this relationship to get myself out of it? No, I understand that. Yeah, what can I do? So I started drinking more. I started doing a bunch of Xanax on top of that, you know, at work doing Coke. Like mm-hmm. my boss did it. So it's like, oh, I'm not going to get fired. I'll be fine. Right. Like whatever. Uh, yeah. Like, okay, everything's cool. And like literally I cheated on my boyfriend. One time. It was just the one time I left messages on my phone. Same night, went over to his house. He looked through my phone. I woke up with him choking me and trying to beat the shit out of me. And he was trapping me in a corner and all this shit, you know, whatever. But that's something I'm so open and honest about because I would never do that again. Right. I only was, I felt stuck and put into that situation because I couldn't escape it. Like, what am I supposed to do? So am I ashamed of that? 100%. That's not me. I don't want anyone to look at me as a cheater, which is why I get so scared sometimes being like, hey, I cheated. Like... But I'm so open about it, and I explain my reasoning. The I explain story, yeah. what happened, why I was in that situation, everything that built up to that point, then everything after that point. Even after he beat the shit out of me, what did I do? I still went back to him a oh, year later. I felt that. Mm-hmm. Still yeah. went back to him a year later because I was like, we can, we can work this out. Yeah. Like, everything's going to yeah. be great. And got the cops called on us, broke up again, went back to him. Now he owes me over two grand. Um <laughs> won't talk to me unless he needs money. I'd say like five or six months ago, ask me again for $50. Here he is owing me over almost mm-hmm. two grand. And I just go, okay, yeah. Cause I'm a sucker. Like I'm just yeah. too nice. And I always will have love for this person. But now I finally realize like, <clears throat> you not, have to know, you have to tough love. Yeah. Tough not love. a healthy yeah. relationship, yeah. not or anything yeah. that I should get myself back to. But right. the part of me yeah. was like, this is what love is. Right. It's it's not. That's mm-hmm. not what love was. That was an abusive relationship. Even though he never put his hands on me in the relationship, I was getting emotionally abused. And that Which is worse. Too. In my yeah. opinion, yeah. it's worse. <clears throat> yeah. I think being emotionally abused is way worse. But I also to jump on what you're just saying, I think that's a wonderful thing, like in a especially early in a relationship, is 
to get out that like get it out you know and yeah early. that's gonna build the trust mm -hmm. like he's gonna trust you way more if your offer is like hey these are the mistakes i made this is how i self-reflected this is how i did better <laughs> <laughs> we've it's, been it's, very open with each yeah. other just uh, like we've been so yeah. open with each other and it's it stuff been. i don't want to say don't want to tell people i talk to my therapist about my parents are like did you tell him and i'm like yeah, yeah i did mom up. my gosh you know like i'm just so open it feels good because i haven't been like this before because i've learned from all of those past things like i have to be open about this now because this is me it's super critical that. this mm -hmm. is me super critical yeah. not enough well, people do it this now. is how i reacted you told me i got like this oh, okay <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah. i'm like thank I'm you like, okay. <laughs> I, like, I yeah. needed that. Yeah. I'm like, I was okay. too scared. It was building up like what? It's been over like what? Three months since I've known him. And I've been too yep. scared to be like, by the way, I cheated on my mm. last boyfriend. I just told him what, like last week. It, yeah. Course, but, but I have to get it out there because if I don't, then some anxiety is like someone's going to tell him. Someone's going to come around and be like, hey, you know, she cheated. And then that puts me in the situation like, why didn't you say anything? But I've also never known a real cheater to confess to it like Fact. to oh, openly just walk wow. up and be like hey by the way this is in my past but this never is what i learned that. from it so Ooh, you're obviously good, not a cheater i never thought about that yeah. i look at myself as just like ah i still beat myself up <laughs> about it but like no, i no, had no, 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 no. i quote unquote had my reasons like everybody would say there are some people that are just like i'm just trying to fuck like, yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm yeah. just trying to get some mm -hmm. and so they do that but that yeah it, that's just not, not who i am yeah. i never looked at it that way yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> now, you feel so what much was your question? <laughs> okay. Oh, your sorry. Question? I yeah. You're you know, good. I guess go off so on tangents. It was how did you guys meet? <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's a fun one. Yeah, it is. Do you want to start with it? I, I, I don't know. You, start, you have to because they made me start. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just I'll go. So he That's does fine. podcasts. I do podcasts. Um, what? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Hey. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so we had a mutual friend, um, a mutual person, I guess that we both know. And um, they introduced us and was like, hey, Chase this podcast, you do too, maybe you guys should meet. So he came into my work one day to see this person and give her something. And he's like, yeah, I'm going in. He told me later, he's like, I was going in because I knew you were gonna be there. Like, I wanna meet you and Aww. all this stuff. And then he messaged me on Facebook. We started talking about podcasts and stuff like that. I went into a little bit of a depression and I ghosted him for about a month. Man. <laughs> and that was not, that was just everybody in life. I go through my ghosting phases because I, I get I'm depressed. Gonna, we can share it first here. I was like, oh, damn, I gauged it wrong. She doesn't like me. Oh no. <laughs> but, but then, I was watching The Flash in my own movie theater because no one watched that movie because it was terrible. <laughs> and, and so I get this theater and I'm just sitting there, my feet are propped up. And I think you sent a message back from the long message. I did. And I was like, oh, I'm watching The Flash by myself. I was like, whatever. hey, I've been really depressed for like a month. I'm so sorry for like ignoring you. Hey, like, I'm not ignoring you. What's up? And he's like, literally, picture in the movie there, I'm watching The Flash by myself. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got on a movie tangent, and then he's like, how about we go to the movies sometime? And then I think it was just the next week. It we, was two days later. Oh, oh, mm. was, okay, yeah. And then we went up, went to the movies, and we committed a crime. We went to and paid for one movie, and we saw two. We snuck oh. into another theater. You guys are awesome. <laughs> That's fun. He'd never done that before. I was like, come on, let's go. And he's like, you're a criminal. I'm like, I know. <laughs> I was like, what else do you do? And she's like, I like to steal I hot sauce. I do. I steal hot sauce from restaurants, <laughs> and I jaywalk. <laughs> no, you don't. I stole a little on our one of our first one of our first few dates. I stole a <laughs> ramp, like one of those salsa containers. <laughs> Yes. Oh, I, put it, I put it in the. I put it in the. I said, "This is how, what you're supposed to do." And I pop, put it in the to go box. And Louis was like, "I really like you so much." Like, he was like, "I pulled it out of my purse when we got here." He goes, "I didn't even see you take that." I was like, "I'm no, so no, no, like, no, no. That was the third one. The first one, you're like this. You go, "Oh, hot sauce." I think I. Have. Oh. And I go, "That's from a restaurant." And then you go. It is. I oh, stole yeah. it. You guys stole it. I do. I, you have to. That is what it's meant for. They it, give you cute things at restaurants for. to steal. All but right. I'm pretty, I mean, it's overpriced. I mean, <laughs> like, you know, I'm paying for this yeah. because I, and I'm tipping you. All and I'm including dishes mine. and everything. I and I was, I was so hurt. And I went like this. Okay. <laughs> 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 I'm like, okay. Oh, oh, water. Stay. But yeah, that's how we met <laughs> off Whoa. of, I guess, kind of one of your toxic relationships, eh? Yeah, that wasn't a good one. <laughs> so, I the mutual friend that we 
person. Child. I almost responded to that. <laughs> the, I really uh, heard mom. Mom and alert. I was like, mom oh, alert. Yeah. They're well, not here. It's, what was the name of the kid who we found in the toilet? <laughs> All I know is he had his pants down and was splashing around. Oh, no. Yeah, I walked in. I'm like, I really got to go to the bathroom. And he's just playing in the toilet bowl. Kids are so feral. Yeah. It was. I'm like, <laughs> well, I was like, hi. And he goes, what? And then, and then walked out. <laughs> and I was like, I have to pee so bad, but I have to find this kid's mom. <laughs> so we just started walking. Then he came in and goes, is this gun? And he pointed to the Nerf gun up top. I go, not a real one. <laughs> and he goes, ooh. And he grabs one and starts shooting at the target. And then Carly, I'm like, help, help me, help. I'm like, he said this for like a half an hour at least. Yes. And then his mom's like, get in here. <laughs> and he just oh, left. Oh, no. <sighs> and he just walked away. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember I was there for that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, you were. Yes, you were. With Dayton. Mm-hmm. It's a Dayton, yeah. But anyway, so the person was an ex of mine who now, on further reflection, so my son's mother is probably the best in the game at manipulation. Hmm. So as someone who was like 14, like I didn't know any different. So then I'm like, oh, this is what this is what it probably feels like or whatever. And then... Uh, I was 16 when I had my kiddo, so he's nine. And, you know, I've never gone anywhere. He had a terrible first couple of years in the hospital. And then now he's healthy as a horse. Hmm. Um, and so she wasn't really there uh, for that. But back on the, like, if I had to gauge why this would happen, it's probably reflective of, like, she didn't know how to end it, I guess, or didn't know that maybe marriage wasn't that serious in her mind and then it like was to me and so I was working 12 hours at the railroad and then I'll go to school so I work at night sleep for three hours and then go to school eat a eat a dinner and I did that for like four months (coughs) excuse me and then um I come home it's like 6 a.m and there's like two dudes in my house Mm -mm. and I was like oh like the first thing I go like this where's my son he's Mm. like two maybe and b- prior to that, like, no sorry or whatever, but I walk in and he's just like this. <coughs> and he's like one and a half. And I go, Madden, he has a penny in his mouth. Oh, and, I, no. and I do the whole, because I was a lifeguard at 16, so I go, oh, Jesus. And I like flip, I go. <coughs> and then it goes. <coughs> and it <laughs> flies across the room, hits the lamp pole and goes, ping. Just like that. And I'll never forget it. He goes, <gasps> And he just looks at me and I go, oh my gosh, where is she? She's in the toilet. She's in the toilet. And I'm like, what? how long have you been gone? Where's she? I, with a penny? Like, he's in a play area. And then, like a month later, then I found two people in the house. And then it was all locked. And then I'm like, well, and I like that I am at least a smart person. Because I was like, I'm going to think of my kiddo. And I didn't do anything. I left, called the police and go, there's two strange people in my house. I just want to sleep. And I'm on the phone. And she comes up and she goes, you're an asshole. And then punches me in the back of the head while I'm on the police. And I go like this. I swear I'll make a TV show one day and I will (laughs) find the perfect people. But she's probably like a blonde Cali girl who has no point being in Kansas. And she's the dispatch. (laughs) She's on the phone. And she goes, she's like, yeah, I like the police are busy. Oh no. <laughs> oh go, my god. Oh, no. <laughs> right. And then I get hit and I go, Well, I've just been struck, so can I get cops now? And she goes, Oh my god. And, she, and, there's a, <laughs> and there's a long pause, a long pause. And I go, Hello? And she goes, Did it hurt or what? Oh my oh, god. Oh no. I hope <laughs> she got I, fired. Yeah. So oh my god. Yeah. Could you imagine like the tragedy? Did it like, hurt? Like, Did you like, get oh stabbed? Did it hurt? Being, we're being robbed at gunpoint. She's like, what kind of gun is that? <laughs> <laughs> where, are you, where are they trying to rob? Like, what? is it with the bank on like fifth? What is it? And I'm and I'm Can't sitting there on the phone. Can't you just give them the money? Yeah. Can you just give them the money and let them go, please? They like they like shoo shoo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they like go go. Just give them the money. And I'm like, can I get the police like now? And she goes, no need to be aggressive. Oh she no. Goes, They're like on the way. <laughs> and I was like, thank you. So I just sit outside in the curb, just been hit. They're inside the house. The cops finally show up like 30 minutes later. My parents, who live in Spring Hill, drove there quicker than the cops got there. The cops are next door. Like, 
apartment, police. And I'm like, oh my gosh, they really were busy, number one. <laughs> and number two, I'm like, that took fucking forever. Thank God I wasn't in any real danger. Right. But she stayed in jail that night. So I was like, okay, cool. So then I went right to Facebook and posted the whole thing. I was like, this is what it is. She's very good at this game. And then I had people who would message me after that go like, thank goodness, because I have something to say. And it was like, oh, yeah. and it just like was a rap sheet of people who were like, I think you're finally ready to hear this. Mm -hmm. And I, I was like, that happen. Uh, uh, And so yeah. it was like, oh, she yeah. stole like $300 from me one time. It was for my trip to Italy. And then yeah. I couldn't go to Italy. I'm like, your high school friend? She's like, yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's just so much I didn't know. And it would be the blinder situation. And so after that, um, we did the whole legal stuff and then just wasn't really around until like a couple years ago. And then it's just been complicated after that. Um, but so that was her, that was, uh, my son's mom. And then I didn't know, I didn't want to be by myself. So I was like, I need to find someone who's like, <laughs> it sounds so stupid in retrospect, but there's a therapist who was like, if you have a tough time talking to like like women or like you get nervous and I like terrible anxiety as a kid because all this stuff happening and I'm like okay just ask people out and they'll say no and then you'll get more comfortable with no well the first person I asked said yes so I was like <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Great, sweet <laughs> and then I was like oh and I started after like a couple months I'm like about the same period of time like three months I'm like I should not be with this person very opposite very different and I went I don't want to be by myself and then that lasted a couple years, maybe a year and a, nine months or something. And then I just like went off the deep end. I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? And then I broke it off, didn't talk to her for a while. And then I forget exactly how it worked back into it, but like pulled on the emotional part of it that was like still attached. And then was like, no, it's just a friend thing. And then she just wanted medication my mm -hmm. prescription medication and i'm like oh i get it that's so terrible so then that was probably a year and a half two years ago no mm -hmm. i think so something like that about two about two and and then she had mentioned carly before and after that i was like i just stalked your facebook i'm sorry <laughs> and i was like i was like oh my gosh i'm like She's gorgeous. Aww. I was like, then she was a podcast. And I go, I'll listen to all of them. <laughs> and then I got to know you and I listened to all of them. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to go see her. And then it was just weird if I show up to your work, not meeting you and being yeah. like, hi, I saw you on the internet. Yeah. Hey, I saw you on Facebook. Weirdo. Nice to meet you. I really hope you've heard of me. Run like, away. it's just like, hi, I'm Carol. Like, it's just not going <laughs> to work. And um, so I went in there and. It was so funny because I brought like a box and I was like, okay, here's a, here's one, is a prescription medication. And she goes, oh, thank goodness, saved me so much. She starts like getting emotional. And then I see her walk by and then I'm like, oh, there she is. She's walking, she's walking. And then <laughs> Carly. And then I go, oh, we're in, we're in. Yeah. We're, in. <laughs> we're in. Score. And then she hugged me so tight. And I was like, I'm so in. Aww. <laughs> and then that was it. That's all it was. And then I just didn't. I was like, well, I'm not going to give up. And so I just didn't. I love that. And then, and then now we. I don't watch movies alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad some toxic... I was telling him the other day, I was like, man, I'm so glad that all of this toxicity led up to you. Yep. Like, Me as too. shitty as yeah. that sounds, Same. it's like yeah. I went through so yeah. much. I have dealt with all the bad stuff. I've gone through so much. Mm -hmm. I'm in therapy. Like, I've been on medication. I've gone through the ringer with all of these people, and it's been so terrible. But now it's just like, man, this all kind of seems worth it because I found somebody yeah. that's right. actually really good. You it can breathe. It seems worth it now. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, we had that same, same conversation. All right, my next question I have for you guys. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. since, since you we're know on we can it. ramble. Well, <laughs> since, since we're on it, what is what is the most toxic thing you've you've ex experienced or witnessed or seen a relationship do? And what could be your own? When you've seen it, doesn't matter. I immediately well, first I gonna, thing. Oh, you're going. You can I, go. I didn't, I didn't see your hand raised. Of go course ahead. you go. You had your hand raised. She I did. Raised I mean, it. I did. <laughs> also, let, when I raise my hand. At, at any point, she goes, it's so, hon, you're next. <laughs> you're next. <laughs> you're next. Because you and my sister were just going, and I was like this. 
Your turn, it'll be in a second. And you go, it's your turn. I go, <sighs> <laughs> what was Calm I going to say again? <laughs> That's <Man>. what I do. <laughs> I'm like, hold on. And I go, quiet. I'm like, let me find it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you guys start talking. I go, got it. Mm-hmm. Another hand. <laughs> Another hand. So mine is like actually two two of my exes. Um, I was dating this guy and, um, you know, I was open about the cheating, of course. Mm-hmm. And he still was convinced that I was like talking to my other ex-boyfriend. So one night he woke me up out of a dead sleep and was like, what the fuck is going on? What are you doing? And I was like. Hey, oh my God, what's going on? And he's like, I've been messaging your ex-boyfriend and he's been telling me all this stuff about you. And I'm like, mind you, this is the ex that I cheated on, does not like me, owes me money. Like, yeah. mm, okay. So he's getting all this like inform- information from my ex-boyfriend, woke me up out of a dead sleep, wouldn't let it go. Then two months later, when me and him are breaking up, my other ex reached out to me and told me that they had planned to meet each other, have one of them invite me out, be like, yeah, let's go out for a drink or let's go out for dinner or something. And the other one was going to be at the bar. They planned to do this for me to meet one and have the other one there so that they could confront me and talk to me about all the things that would happen there in our relationship. There wasn't going to be any talking. <sighs> None. Fisticuffs. No. That is so creepy and weird to me. Like, they were like, well, let's get down. What are you saying that's the truth and what's a lie? I'm like, I was honest about everything. They were trying to, like. So, wait a minute. You're saying your ex? Both of my exes. They, gained, they teamed up. They teamed up to try and, like, meet with me and attack me, essentially, and be like, what's the truth? Like, did you cheat on him and why? And what have you been doing? And what have you been lying about yeah. to him? I want to know everything about you. And now that we're in front of your face, you can't lie. You have to tell us everything. Okay, so you didn't cheat on the second one? No. Okay. No. And so essentially what I'm gathering... He thought I was. Yeah, essentially what I'm mm-hmm. gathering is you expressed yourself. And I, I have a scale. I'll break it down another time. It's a really cool scale. It's called the intellectual half-wit and crude scale. It's a mm-hmm. great scale with judging people. We use it all the time. It's Yeah, it's Is it? great. You'll love it. Did I score well? You did good. <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> essentially, you don't want to be a crude and you don't want to be intellectual. Because an intellectual is someone who overthinks everything to like mm. the extreme. And a crude, they just do stuff. Ah. So what you want to be is you want to be the halfwit, and I use the funny. I like that name because it's funny. Halfwit, like, yeah, mm-hmm. halfwit. So that would describe. Are you saying I passed as a halfwit? Yes. Yeah, it's a good thing. It's a good it's thing. A good, you want thing. to be the halfwit. Want to be the halfwit. Okay. okay. It's a little funny. It's a funny scale. In D and D, if you're half elf, half, you know, it's a good thing. Yeah. It's so that makes you more balanced out, where you don't rabbit hole your brain to the extreme of everything, but at the same time, you're not just doing stuff. You're thinking before you do things. You're balanced. Mm. And so I would describe him as someone who's an intellectual. Like they, you told you you opened up and expressed yourself like you opened up and expressed yourself to him and he took it as okay she learned and this is a thing and i trust you more for this as an intellectual yeah. their brain ran so many miles with it they're like oh if she did it to him she's gonna do it to me like once a cheater always a cheater they don't have mm. any feel they don't have any feel of who a person is just logical on a piece of paper mm-hmm. so when you told him that maybe you had the intention of what you have now yeah. but it backfired simply because of the way their brain was wired yeah it it self-destructive yeah he went through my phone i told some guy hey i have a boyfriend please stop messaging me he goes why are you entertaining this guy why are you entertaining i I told him i had a a boyfriend you know and then um in the end he got really drunk one night and was face down outside of his car in the rain throwing up i was trying to get him inside i i'm sorry i had to go through his phone because he went through mine and I just this part of me and I'm not somebody who goes through people's phones, but this part of me was just like, do it. He you went through your feeling, right? Yes. So yeah. what I did, the our entire relationship, he was messaged. And mm-hmm. I, mind you, we were together for like six, seven months. I'd never gone through this one. I, our entire relationship, he was messaging his ex-girlfriend, sending them picture her her pictures of them together from their last relationship. Oh no, no. Me no. and him went to a concert. Me and him did bingo. Well, he invited her to do that first. And then he invited me to go do that. So he had sent her the invitations to the shows and, and the declined. bingo. And oh. she said no. And then he invited me to go. And I was like, that's the concert we went to. Yeah. See, that's the show that. we bingo? went to. Bingo? 
Yeah, like a like a trivia <laughs> night, like at a bar, like you can go win oh, like, like gift cards. Oh, like a retirement cards. village. No. <laughs> You're gonna not love this. But be you know, no. then I found be out 19, he was doing that. <laughs> but yeah, I found out he was doing that, and I'm like, I was actually faithful, and you mm. thought I was. That's usually how it goes. Usually, the cheater is the one that's accusing you of cheating. Mm-hmm. When really you're gonna catch me, it's just them yeah. reflecting and being like, "Man, I'm I'm a shitty person." Because they don't trust themselves, so yeah. how can they trust you? It's yeah. the most oh. toxic stuff you guys have been through. Hmm. I was, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, I don't think she, I'm gonna show oh, Chase. Oh yeah, Chase is next. I he did. Ra- he raised he raised what, his what, hand. What? You're next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just wanted to beat you. Do we need to pause uh-huh. so you can find it? I found it. Okay. <laughs> 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 um. But I was going to say, I don't think, do you know about his shirt? No. Yeah. Are you deflecting it back this way? He is. He's totally deflecting. He's deflecting. I don't, just preface, this is uh, my studio. This is (laughs) (laughs) my podcast. I'm pretty good. So, (laughs) all right, all right. Um, Your turn. A little background on this. Mm -hmm. Um, Since we're talking about toxic exes and Mm. and toxic relationships and different things. Last thing. Um. It's very touchy, and I'm not forcing you at any point to do it, but it, your story reflected so much. It, I think it actually changed like genetically, like DNA-wise, mm-hmm. like who I am as a person, to the point where I want as many people to hear it as possible, because mm-hmm. that's your vision, that's your mission, that's the thing that you want, and I want you to have that, so we love you, dude. I appreciate cool. that. I appreciate that. Um, so since we're talking about toxic relationships and toxic things, um, and, and you know a lot about drug addicts and different things like that, my baby mama and my ex was really bad, hardcore drug addict. Yeah. Um, kind of like Chase's story where, you know, you mentioned him having, to, you know, I took care of both my kids. And um, just last November 23rd, uh, I dropped my kids off. I had to go back to work. I dropped my kids off on a Sunday night and... By Monday, I get a phone call saying that my son was dead. Um, She was drugged out on fentanyl and Xanax and everything else at like 12 o'clock in the afternoon. She'd moved his bedroom downstairs in the basement with hers because, or her parents did, because she couldn't ever get up and watch her kid. And they wanted her to be a mom. We're trying to force her to do it. Um, And he's bored. And 12 o'clock in the afternoon, mom's still asleep, nothing to do. His brother's in school. His old, his older brother's my other son. He's he's uh, six. He was in kindergarten. Uh, but anyways, he gets a hold of her loaded, chambered, not on safety handgun, and he's no longer oh with us. Oh my god. Um. So that that's that was my son Roman. Um, and that that's it's it's essentially my mission and why I. I want to get out. I want to speak, and I want to make the world a better place, because I, I'm tired of seeing ugly like this happen. I'm mm-hmm. tired of seeing people fall in situations like this. You know, that's everything for me was taken. Wow. You know, and it's it's I I can relate it back to you know since we're on the topic of relationships, I can relate it all the way back to my bad decisions. You know, like. My son, my sons are amazing. They're they are the two best kids I've I've ever met. Well behaved, you know, amazing, you know. But being with the wrong person can cost you everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. that's another thing. Like a reason I wanted, I I really wanted to talk about this tonight, is because people just do relationships nowadays. They just do stuff, you know, and like I did, and they don't think of the possible repercussions of. You know, you you raise a child for four years and it becomes your life and your energy, your fire behind going to work every day. And then it gets ripped away from you. My older son. So here's an, here's another kicker where it gets even worse. My older son is not biologically mine. I met him at three months. So now I have to fight the court systems to get mm-hmm. him back when I'm yeah. not biologically or on any paperwork. Right. And so it makes things really, really hard. Do you have a way to maybe file for adoption or I don't know if that's a, uh, I'm uh, working with his biological dad. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I, I, when he gets, that's really him, great too for him. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. We've become good friends. We, good. We've our mutual awesome. hatred for her. And his, <laughs> his show. Uh, yeah. He's a great guy too. He's a, he's a good guy. We both kind of walked the same path and, 
you know, we both felt that hurt when we lost him because when he came, when he was in, he was in both my kids' life as well. He, mm -hmm. he wasn't just like, just like I took care of both my kids and seen them no different, he did the same. So it wasn't like I just lost a son. He also lost yeah. a son. Yeah. So it, it, it's, it's, um, wow. that's just a little bit about my backstory. Yeah. And, thank and you for sharing. Story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I just, I really think it's important and I really want to get it out there. Like, so people can like take their life a little bit more seriously. Yeah. You know, like take initiative. Don't, don't allow your kids to be around that kind of chaos. You know, mm -hmm. you, you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier about, you've witnessed a lot of drug addicts and a lot of terrible people and you, you can't have them around there. And if, if I could go back in time, I don't have any regrets. I know why I did the things I did. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have any regrets, but if I could go back in time and give myself advice, yeah, you know, I would have fought a lot harder to make sure my kids didn't, weren't nowhere near, her, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, and I also said when you were here last time you told me, I was like, you can't blame you for any of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I know that that's, probably something that I can't I can say as much as I want but it's like you live with you and you know I just want you to know that that's not on you I, I mean a hundred percent like it's not it's someone else who just is so damn selfish that it, it like I said same thing like I'm you're in the toilet my son's choking on a penny yeah you don't have any idea. And it's not like she's, she's like playing Candy Crush. Mm -hmm. And I'm like... Well, yeah, he could have lost his life. If I didn't walk in the door, mm -hmm. right. he could have lost his life. Some and people so, don't have the maternal instinct. Some women don't have that. Especially when they're on drugs. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. And that, my, my mindset behind, you know, because it was August of uh, this last August when I allowed her to have my kids, put them in school because my yeah. mom moved to Virginia. It was hard for me. Paying babysitters to watch them. Yeah, I and understand so, you, mom. I understand yeah, you, man. Her her parents were retired, both of them, and so I figured her dad was a reti is a retired firefighter. And, you know, they're both retired at the house all day, so I figured, okay, you know, I didn't trust her necessarily, and even though she was telling me, "Oh, I'm gonna step up, and be better," I didn't necessarily believe that. But I was like, I know she's in a better neighborhood than me, and her parents are retired, so someone's gonna be watching my kids. Would, but, uh, you know. Do you want to follow up with uh, what happened with her after? Um, Which I guess is pretty simple. Just as nothing. Yeah. No, she's still. She's, nothing. Oh, yeah, I didn't say that. Yeah, she's still not locked up yet. She I still has that. custody of my older son. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. DCF has done nothing. They, 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 they <laughs> yeah. And not laughing because it's funny, obviously, no. but no. like it's, laughing because, wow, that's it's insane. It's that's ridiculous. absolutely bonkers. Yeah, I actually had my siblings taken away from DCF for a code violation that my parents had for yard stuff, yard signs in their yard. They had. Wow. And so yeah. I, but meanwhile, I lose my whole son and my other son doesn't yeah. get taken out of her care. I get to see him with the grace of his biological dad every two weeks on a weekend. Fuck yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. It, just, it, it sucks that me. a toxic, it's... you can know that a person is toxic. Like you've been in a relationship with that person. You had a child with this person. You've gone through all of these things. You know that they're a bad person. Other people do, but the court mm -hmm. just looks at it like they're the mom. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. Yeah. It's yeah, okay. What, that same thing. Yeah. It took there forever. Is finally charges on her. Good. Yes. Yeah, all right. There's Good. finally, there's finally charges. It's in process. Mm hmm So hopefully she gets locked up and I get my son back. That's the that's yeah. the that's the goal. Yeah. That's the goal. Seriously, I hope oh, so. Oh, I don't, hon, do I quit? What? Do oh I, no. <laughs> I don't quit, dog. No. Yeah. I'm on it. Don't give I'm up. I'm on it. Yeah. We don't quit. Yeah. But I wanted to make sure that she knew that too. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with me. It's crazy that you know, like. Like I said before, you don't know how toxic a person can be mm -hmm. until it all unfolds. Like, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, that situation didn't yeah. have to happen, but the situation and did happen. Essentially, I think one of the biggest things while we're on the topic, you know, one of her biggest problems in a lot of relationships, people's biggest problems is lack of self-reflection. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so, especially in a relationship, you know, people go into new relationships carrying old trauma or, you know, they just don't reflect on their lives. They just do things. Nothing's their fault. You'll hear a lot of narcissists. They'll talk about narcissists doing this and different things like that. Um, if you ever get in a relationship where you're talking to somebody and you can tell they don't self-reflect, run away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get away from them because, you, you know, they're, they're the type that everything's your fault. 
Yeah. No matter mm-hmm. what, they could cheat on you and they're going to turn around and be like, oh, well, you drove me to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Okay, you got to take some yeah. responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you I, know. A crazy story. So after the whole man's mom incident, I decided because at that point I was, I'm, I'm still Christian oriented, but it's like I've had people let me down in the church for, and this is a good example. I went to the pastor of my church. And I told them the whole spiel because it just happened. It's probably like I was not doing well. It was like a week after. And he goes, well, what would you do? And I go, what do you mean what did I do? And he goes, I'm like, I was working at the rail yard doing this. He goes, so you were gone a lot. Dang. And I, Put and the I blame was, on you. Right. And then I was, like, are you, I was like, are you serious? And he goes, yes. And I go, so you're full of shit. <laughs> He's probably in a toxic relationship himself. Yes. Like, he probably should have gotten be. divorced. And she was be. like, yeah. no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, how are you in charge of a trick? <laughs> like, Sorry. what are you doing? You know, for like, people, like, and you'd be surprised. There's, there's, I call them simps. That's <laughs> <laughs> his know biggest that one. pet peeve. One of my biggest pet peeves. I call them simps. There's people that get punked around by, by their spouse, male or female, don't matter. There's people that get punked around by their spouse so much that they will tell people, like, the advice for, like, you know, oh, well, you, like, I've had somebody give me a very similar thing and he was like, trying to give me relationship advice and he was like, oh, well, you know, you shouldn't be hanging out with your friends when you're in a relationship. I'm like, what? <laughs> you're so like, are you what? serious? Yeah. I'm like, you have zero like, friends? He's <laughs> like, yeah, I do. Because I, do. I love her so much. You what? shithead. <laughs> you shithead. That's your fault. Yeah. And I, I haven't like, been allowed to have about? guy friends. Yeah. Me either. Yeah. I really was Toxic. never allowed. Texted my coworker. Why are you? You're the only person I know who texts your coworkers outside of work. Mm-hmm. What? Well, I was in the you. military and we would have this group chat. And he would get mad at me because they were having conversations that I had nothing to even pertain me. to me. Like half the time, oh, you have all these men texting you. I'm like, bro, these these are guys from my squad. Like I work yeah. with them. Are you in the military? I was, yeah. Yeah, what, what were you in? I was in the army. That's not, I said, who, who, that's wrong. What? That's Marine, isn't it? For uh, what? I was not in the Marines. No, no, no. No. Not saying you couldn't be. That's not what I'm saying. Hoorah. I don't know. Hoorah. Okay. I think army is army, army. I don't know. No, they say hoorah. They do? Okay. They do. That's it. My buddy's in the guard. He actually lives in Oklahoma. Where are you from? Oklahoma. Well, I, what city? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he's also from Oklahoma. You were like, I'm from Oklahoma. Like, I, well, I was on the same track as I you, would, okay? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> You're good, you just said it. I was on the track as you. No, I, I've honestly lived all over Oklahoma, but I, I really claim Chickasha because that's where I've spent most of my adult life. It's such weird names down there. They are. They're dr- all they're all Indian derived. Yes. Like, yeah. And I go, I think I'm in the town closest to you guys. <laughs> and they go, where are you at? And I go, it says Ulaga Talalada. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make that shit up. And I go, it's on the whole high school sign is just Ulaga Talalada, whatever mm-hmm. it is. And they go, okay, you're in Ulaga. You're close. And I go, where are you? They go, Skyatuk. Oh, I, I'm familiar. <laughs> yes, yeah. and I go. Why is it called sky took? That sounds stupid. They go because they believe that the spirit came down and took the sky. They also have a still water, and they also have a no water. No like, water. Mm-hmm. No water. No water. <laughs> I've been like through no soul. water. They have all kinds of weird names. It's, it's immediate. Funny. It's like Coffeeville, and it goes. Oh, I, gotta look, do, 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 do. <laughs> I go like this. I go. I'm in whatever this is. <laughs> so you just moved here. To be with him, right? I did. Ah, oh, oh. okay. I love that. So she, she had rooted her whole life. She had a, uh, yeah. a nice So I'm nice guessing house and, everything. You know, like what, like two months ago? Something I've been like here that. For about That's two so months. Awesome. Are you serious? Yeah. That means when you talked about it, it had just happened. Yeah. 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 Timeline, man. I, yeah, I no, know. literally, like, we, we, did the, we did a really out of the norm thing. Like, who cares? You, you don't see couples that, like, who I cares? Mean, I think we we're, we're talked out of the norm. we talked yeah. for like three weeks like just talking and going out on dates and then he asked me to be his girlfriend and a week later he asked me to move in with him so I was like yeah, yeah when you know you I'm know doing it. like <laughs> well, good well, for you I I told you it was like a week wasn't it I was like I love you yeah <laughs> I started and crying I started crying I started oh. sobbing I was just like eh, and I go pussy. like this. I yeah. fucked up. I fucked up. <laughs> he thought I he did. messed up because yeah, I was crying. And he's like, I'm so sorry. Like, And I was like, I love you too. Yeah. <laughs> and then I go, I love you more. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I didn't. I, I was like, he said, I love you. And I was like, 
do you, do you really mean that? You Did sure? you mean to say that? You sure? I'm like, oh, well, I love you too. No. I just didn't know. <laughs> I almost said it in Target. I was like, hi, hon, let's do this, and then uh, we'll do this. You're like, okay. I'm like, I love I was like, oh, hi, Shat. And I go, so anyways, I was like, I'm acting like I did not hear that. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, I'm guessing things were not great for you in Oklahoma to want to uproot and move. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, I know you have a child. I so have two. You have two have kids. Two children. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have a boy and a girl. Mm -hmm. um, I was married to their dad yep. for eight years. Mm -hmm. And it was the yep. whole time. Toxic. The whole time. I'm saying, like, maybe I think we were three months into our marriage and it was already like, Oh and yeah, you know. he cheated on you. He did all this, and and my. Is he also in the army as well? No, no, okay. no, 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 no. no. I, I just no. ask because sometimes I know people that are in the same branches will right. marry each they other do. sometimes. Yeah. So I was just curious. Yeah. No, um, so I don't know why. I, I mean, mm, I wanted. Okay, so the way that you grew up, were seeing your parents, I had the total opposite. Oh really? So mm. I grew up, and my parent, my biological parents, have always been together. I never saw them fight. I like mm. I saw tons of affection, like all the things that you would think would be positive, but can also have such a bad impact yeah. in a way because you're like, you don't really see how to navigate that relationship. All you see is yeah. the perfect positive. Good um, stuff. Wow. And so I think <laughs> I think because yeah. I think because I grew up with that mindset, I'm like, man, my everybody should stay married once they're married you have kids together you should do everything you can to make it work and so i think i had to really break out of that ideology in order to get to the place that i am today um 100 yeah. do you think it you have a hard good. time navigating like arguments and stuff now since you didn't see your parents do that because here i am like i wish my parents never fought but now that i know that they fought i'm like i know when to step away from that i think right. i think i didn't learn it from my parents i learned it from that relationship yeah yeah because it was so bad and so negative all the time and it got it was very abusive i mean uh, he's he's pulled a chainsaw on me and threatened to kill a me. A chainsaw. A chainsaw. Oh, my my son was underneath the Justin, bed. Justin, you can kill this man. <laughs> yeah. He's locked up. So I'm yes. he is in prison. Mm -hmm. Good. I jumped this. Yeah. <laughs> He, oh, he I already is. knew that. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I already knew that. What? Already knew that. <laughs> you talked already? Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, like a little bit. We chatted. Like, we chatted. Not, and you not got to chainsaw on your life. No, no, no. No, that's new to her, too. That's new. That was new to her, too. That's Just not new. new to him. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, there was it's a lot of toxicity. Oh there was a lot. And so I think that I. I did, I want to say two years before I actually left, I started my self-growth journey. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's when I joined the military. Mm -hmm. um, I got away from the situation and I kind of figured out who I was again, um, rebuilding myself and my confidence. Yeah. The army, it'll do that for you. It'll build yeah. your confidence. You seem very confident. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, so I went for I went for two years. I did all my meditations. I did the journals. I I did a whole lot. And you know, anytime he would walk through the door, everything would get shut off. And I'd be like da 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 da. Nothing. Like he had no idea this whole time that I I'm growing. sitting here building myself and yeah. growing. And the time came. Um, they the FBI decided to pursue charges on a sexual assault case mm. with him. It was not on me. Um, right. And. I you went both through, are just shaking me to my whenever, core today. Uh, <laughs> he went. He went to go for his pre sentencing, and I took the opportunity while he was away to get away from the gaslighting and the manipulation. I did all the research I could, all about the DNA test, how they decipher if it's touch DNA or like legit, like first person DNA. I did it all. I sent him a whole bunch of articles, and I was like, "Listen, I just I know that you did it." But hearing it from you before you plead guilty would be really nice. Mm. And he hung up on me. <gasps> oh. He said, I have court in the morning. I don't want to have this conversation. Called oh, me the yeah. next morning. You just answered the question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, answer. Called me the next morning and was like, I have, I'm going to tell it, I'm going to admit to, that I did it. And I'm like, oh, I know. And he was like, well, are you going to wait for me? Hell no, <laughs> I'm not going to wait for you. What are See you talking you about? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good so, Lord. Um, he, he returned back to Chickasha and, yeah. um, I ended up having to file a restraining order with my children on it. Um, no longer felt safe 
mm-hmm. while he was in the general area. So I packed my kids and I up and we moved to my hometown, which is Pawhuska. And um, these names, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> moved down to Pawhuska and my parents were helping me out, but I was only there for three, three months or so. And now you get to be with us. Yay. (laughs) Blessing in disguise. Well, I'm glad you got out of that because that's like so hard. As a woman speaking to Mm. another woman, it's so hard to get out of stuff like that. I guarantee if I had stayed another six months, I I would not be here today. No, because oh like you gosh. saying you prepped for it and all that, I can only mm-hmm. imagine how scary that is being like, shut everything down before he gets home, like, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Like, that is so scary, yeah, and, and I'm so, so th- glad. That's another thing, like, that people don't really realize is, like, when you're in a toxic relationship, like, people think, oh, I'm just in a relationship, it's fine, ha, huh? you know, but next thing you know, you're losing your life, or even mm-hmm. worse, your, your yeah. children are losing their lives. In a split second. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I have a buddy, oh, man, I hate telling this story, too. Uh, one of my buddies I used to work for him. I did lawn care and stuff like that for a summer. And we used to train MMA together. Uh, really good buddy. His name was Nick Ecker. But uh, he, he like every time we were running our routes for, for cutting people's lawns and stuff like that, he was always like checking checking his, uh, his doorbell cameras yeah. and different things like that. And they had such a toxic relationship. I was like, dude, that is not good. And I just broke up with Sarah for, at that time. So I was like getting away from it. I'm looking at him mm-hmm. doing the same thing. I'm like, bro. Get away from that. It's bad. Yeah. Anyways, they ended up getting in a really bad, toxic argument, and their house caught fire. No. Oh. And they mm. lost their, I think he was a two or oh, three no. year old in that oh. fire. Oh, no. And they're both locked up right now. Wait, 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 wait. When did this happen? You probably know about it. Happened. Carly? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. See? Small world. Listen to this. Oh, my. I'm sorry to totally go off topic. <laughs> Rocket girl. Her mom, Loretta, mm-hmm. was my babysitter, and they taught me sign language when I was a baby. They were my babysitter, and that's why I'm an interpreter right now because How of that family. So I was going to be named Carly May. I'm Carly Storm because they were my babysitter, and I am not Carly May. I swear to you I am friends with that entire family. Mm-hmm. I that is so freaking crazy. Oh. He was a baby. He was like a month. He was like a year. I mean, he was less than that. So she went to go buy drugs at, yeah. they had a house party, mm-hmm. went to go buy drugs and um, she left a candle burning or something and it lit on fire. Dad was driving by the house and was like, where's Junior? Where's Junior? And she's like, what are you talking about? He's inside. He's like, the fucking house is on fire. And he died. Oh, my God. She's now violated her probation twice. So Mm -hmm. now she's like official. her parent. I know it's her parents that keep posting bail. But she keeps getting sent back because she's violating her probation. She just violated it again recently. And so now she's locked up. But I've known that family since I was literally born. Literally born. Why is he locked up? Because there's suspicion that he was a part of it because he was in the area when the fire was going down. But they can't put why he was there from what i know yeah i mean he, and he's a good i can vouch but he wasn't person. at the house he never went to the house yeah. he was never a part of anything he saw the fire isn't the and said opposite? something isn't it guilty oh, no, i'm sorry she's it's, gotten it's off on everything and he's locked. not guilty until it, right it's the opposite innocent until proven guilty but yeah. in actuality it's but it's like, guilty I, until depends proven on who innocent. you are because then, they get because because then there's the other out. cases like his yeah. where they're just She's innocent. You just blew my mind. <laughs> yeah. So that's super Blue, your mind. World. Your mind. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't believe. Yeah, that's the same yeah. story. I know exactly what you're yeah. talking and about. So it was crazy. Like that. That's another one of my morals of the story is toxic relationships lead to death. Yeah. And people yeah. do not process that. You know, well her ex-husband enough. got murdered too. Oh, we. I didn't know that. Her ex-husband got murdered. Who she has another two kids with. He's. He's dead. Oh, I knew he was dead. He got murdered. Paid, but I didn't know the details of it. Yeah, he got murdered. He's they dead found his, She's getting paid. They found him yeah, under a bridge. Like, like life some insurance? Type of t- she collected life, ins- life insurance because they were married. Like yeah. So she collected life insurance. Now the other two kids are with somebody or with his parents. And then she got married shortly after. Now she's with somebody else that she met in rehab. Mm-hmm. She's oh. dating somebody else now. Dear God, KCPD, somebody, please, <sighs> God. Yeah. They were like, oh, well, do better. I had my sister come on, and they're like, "What's the major problem? Do you think?" She goes, "Well, there's a rapist of women out here, and they decided to tackle drag racing." Yeah, that's right. And I'm like, "Dear God!" Oh, yeah, you told I was, about that. Look at that. Look at what's happening right now. Also, I have this thing where I'll just go like this, <laughs> and I'll like touch her kneecaps or whatever. 
and it's really awkward and weird. Um, but it's our okay, thing. Okay, he smells it's me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> he <laughs> walks up like they're in the big blue house. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. You know it's what? Okay. <laughs> We're gonna be next door neighbors in that old folks' home. <laughs> You're gonna be like sniffing down the hall. And I'm gonna go like this. <laughs> oh, 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 no. And then <laughs> it's just us two being like, we used to fight MMA. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, good God, we're just here for breakfast. <laughs> oh, gosh. I love that. Well, I have a question too, unless you oh, no. wanted to bounce. I wanna Who's ask, this? what do you think your most toxic trait is? Since we talked about what's your red flag? Like, Ooh. what did you, what would you share? If you could say something, like, what is something you're like, Ooh, I got, man, I got one. This That's is like, hard. I I'm totally so know. It's, like, it's self reflection. I, I like your <laughs> thing about it. saying Nailed if it. you Nailed don't it. That's self reflect. That's it. Nailed it. If you don't self reflect, then like, mm. so that made me think like, I do self reflect. I think I can point out when I have a red flag. Like, what do you think maybe your guys' would be? You want to go first or let me go first? I mean, I, I can go. All right, you go first. You look like you're about to cry. Uh, you called him not perfect. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you have make, no red flags. I'm just kidding. Laugh. That's the button. That's they the button. Red flags. Flags. You're not until perfect, perfect, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, from, from experience, I know that I can be a hothead. Very hotheaded. Mm -hmm. I can react very quickly and then think later. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that I've, I've also had to really work on. Is calm, collective man. communication. I know he's never, I've it's, never it's seen outstanding. Do it yet. He hasn't, but that's because I, I chose to self reflect, focus on it, and fix it. You know, um, you can say uh, some mean things in that time. I can. Like, I, get I can it. be I very get it. vicious. I can just lay it all out, and I can make you cry. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Curled up in a ball. I'll I say can be a very hurt. mean person. Yeah, and no, I will dig don't. super deep. But like, <laughs> but I've grown to a point where I don't. I don't want that done to me. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, like, it's not fun to be in that kind of situation where somebody can't communicate as an adult with you because you're just shut down and are angry. Right. Um, yeah, that's, I would yeah. say that's mine. I like that. I haven't seen it yet. No. Uh, Good. He never will. <laughs> Good. He never will. And I think because she notices that At that's the thing, know. she can lean away from it. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. well, well, I think it's the trust and the love that you guys share. I mean, I can see it looking at you guys. Yeah, I, I definitely say <laughs> right. right. Um, we're gonna be old. We're gonna be old folks, buddy. The podcasters. <laughs> we have old That'd folks friends. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh. It's so weird. <laughs> 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 God damn it. Two bees going no. out again. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, Somebody get them their meds. Oh, my goodness. They're doing oh. it again. Oh, and then I'll be back there going, ee! That's what I do. That's what she does when I sniff I her do head. it. Do Every it time he sniffs, I'm like, ee! <laughs> oh, my. You make those sounds. See? It's a thing. Mm -hmm. it's I was like, hon, here's some good news. You go like this. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's the wholesomeness. That's how you know, like, true partners are really, like, feeling comfortable enough to be themselves. And they can mm -hmm. break out of those normal things and just be themselves. It's a wonderful thing. I love that. Yeah, Absolutely. it's fun. I like to just be comfortable and be myself. Right. It's nice. It's a wonderful it's nice. thing. It's, it's very amazing. refreshing. Yeah. It's very refreshing. Anyways, red flags. Okay. Red flag. Okay, what okay, is okay, it, Mr. Flag. Perfect? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to I, save you. I, I, I definitely think that's probably it. Because I've worked through a lot of different things. But I know the one I lean away from the hardest is a pride complex. Mm -hmm. See, hence my answer earlier. I'm perfect. <laughs> the pride complex yeah. is sometimes I, I get to wear, and I don't think I've done it yet, but you can tell me. I don't know. But <laughs> is I'll, I'll get to where I ride a high horse. Mm -hmm. I I'm always the master of of me and my surroundings, and so and especially I, I've developed this not only from just you know loving myself a lot, but being with a narcissist for so long you learn to live in your own reality. Mm -hmm. You can't be gaslit and different things like that. Yeah. And so what I would do to defend myself from being gaslit so hard, oh, you're a piece of shit and you're this, you're that, you're that. What I would do is I'd, I'd ride a high horse. I'm like, I am better than you. I used to tell her, I am better than you. You are scum. You do drugs. Like, you can't, you can't downplay me. You can ask anybody, you know, and I'd even use other people, you know. And so I think that would be my biggest toxic trait that I try my best to lean away from is I walk with a pride complex to where, you know, I, I can't be refuted. 
Mm-hmm. And so I try to lean away from that because I realize I have to realize I'm not in that situation anymore. I'm not, you know, with a narcissist who's gaslighting me anymore. I'm yeah. with someone I can trust, you know, mm-hmm. I'm with someone I, I don't have to, you know, but I know that was one of the biggest things because then after her, you know, it was just, that was just my, my thing. And yeah. even with other people, with dealing with people, like I always make sure I have the high ground. I have the high ground Anakin. Who, like, mm-hmm. the Star Wars reference. I knew it immediately. <laughs> But, but Not immediately. I was like, what? Uh, Star Wars reference, episode three. Yeah. Cool, guys. Yeah, totally knew that. That would be my biggest red flag. It's a pride <laughs> complex. And yeah. so I try my best to lean away from it to where it doesn't carry on into my new relationship. Yeah, I'm not seeing you become too prideful. Yeah, Good. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Perfect. Self-reflection. There we go. <laughs> see, it works. Like I've just so. seen it. Mr. Perfect. <laughs> but I also think, too, that it helps that in the beginning of the relationship, that is a topic that we discussed. Yeah. And so it was, you're already laying yeah. everything out like, hey, it's, if I f- am acting this type of way, this is where you know that it's coming from. This is why. Yeah. And they kind of know how to de escalate yes. the situation to where it doesn't get nasty. Yeah. I, like I don't that. think I've ever told you mine, huh? Hoo, hoo, hoo. Let's hear it. Now's the time. So my my dad <laughs> was very controlling of everything I've ever done. And then also not receptive of like my love or his, giving his love, for example. And I think it's just it happened the other like a couple of days ago too. I he was like trying to control the situation and school and whatever with Madden. And I was like, You're projecting your like experiences as a kid. So he, when he was, he won't watch this much into it. Um, <laughs> I mean, honestly. And so I was like, I'm okay with talking about my parents. They'll watch five minutes and be like, I loved it. And I'm so like, great. you're going to get an hour and, <laughs> hour and 15 minutes into it. Come on. No, you're not. <laughs> um, like last month they were like, Oh my gosh, your studio looks great. And I was like, it's been here for like a year. <laughs> you just caught on. But when he was little, him and his brother, his younger brother, Um, His mom, they took both of them when their dad was at work, went to meet someone in Louisiana. They married right away. And then he had four other brothers. All of them were in prison uh, Mm. for life. One, like, killed someone. One was, like, a drug distributor. And then he had one young brother. His name was Kurt. The only thing I know about him. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Oh, it's Kurt. He's coming. They're coming. (laughs) I heard you talking about them. Yeah. <laughs> We're not in prison. So, guess what? I swear, if it's the kid in the toilet bowl, <laughs> so I think it is. Do you have the Nerf guns? No. <laughs> Shit, go go go! <sighs> and his younger brother Kurt, who was the only one who was nice to him, shot himself with a shotgun in the head oh. when he was like a teenager. And he has like this like closet of like clothes that he designed and like airbrushed, and it like hits him so hard that I can't ask. And so he has stuff that he doesn't deal with that he then, like, bubbles over and then, like, vomit. Like, it feels like vomiting on me. And then I have to deal with it. And so when I get to a point where it's, like, like Madden's mom today, I was like, you got to help me. I didn't know I was giving you a test. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what to do. I just I feel off. And you were like, no, this is exactly what you should have said. This is the truth. And I'm like, yes, it is. And you're like. Okay. And it's I was all like, good. I go, <sighs> immediately it's it was just good. gone. And there was a point where, like, before I met you, I was like, you know what? I am a guy who doesn't quit, which means I'll go to the grindstone until there's nothing left. And then you were like, hey, we should pull back. You kind of nose into this right now. We should probably maybe take a break or something. I'm like, you can't take a break. I can't take a break. And then you're like, come on, we'll do this. I'm like, Okay, and it gives me, like, relaxation. I don't relax. Neither does I, he. There's no it starts, like, ten things at once. It's like, I'm going to do all yeah. these things. No, and I'm like, super similar. I've already, I've already <laughs> peeped that. <laughs> we're <laughs> super <laughs> similar in a lot of ways. Run, run around, like, constant chickens mm-hmm. with their head cut off. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's one in the morning. I have work at six. I'm like, i got to finish all this stuff. I've literally slept in here for two hours and then gone to work. And I'm like, I still didn't get any of that stuff done. Mm-hmm. And so I get very confused between work and motion because if it's either or if i'm working towards something then i'm like the achievement is whatever i'm trying to fill and then the motion is just the sense of trying to do the same thing so then i'm like if i'm moving then nothing can hit me right Mm -hmm. you probably you probably like 
put like six different things to do. You might get done three of those six things and you're gonna mad about those other three you didn't finish and you probably don't sit back and take the time. Like, well, I got the three done, like and be proud of those three. Yeah. Or I he'll get imagine. half of all six done. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> he'll get no. half of everything done. It's like, well, I didn't finish anything, but you that, got that's half what of we all call six. motion. We I call know. that motion, not completing anything. Combine it all together and you probably got a couple projects. I can yeah. definitely relate yeah, to that's you true. on that for sure. I feel that. Mine yeah. is that I 100% I'm an oversharer. Oh, like, oh, I'm sorry. Go, what? Yeah, the go. For, the time. So because of that trait, <laughs> I never realized that bounce, I was bounce, bounce, bounce. doing it until Friday when we went out. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm supposed to film this production for this. This group's oh, supposed to yeah. come in. And Takes you away from the moment. Normally, I'd freak out. I'd lose my shit and go ballistic. And I was like... I don't give a fuck. I'm like, I'm with my people. I'm with my person. And I set it down, and I was just there with my son, my two friends, my sister, and then you. And I'm like, oh, wait, I can do this? And I'm like, that took 20, I'm 26, I'll be 27 November. It took 27 years to figure that out and about three months. That's it. And I was like, oh, I do do that stuff. <laughs> oh. But then it, 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 she just brings me back to reality. That's awesome. I've literally gone to the moon. She's like, hey, come, lasso, bring me back <laughs> down. She's like, come back down here. Like, it's great to be a dreamer. I support the dreams, but we got to kind of dial it back do. in a little bit that here. you do. <laughs> no one else has done that either. Dial I'm it like, in. I've got this crazy vision. You're like, you'll get it. But mm -hmm. it's very baby steps. Mm -hmm. And I go, I want it to be big steps. Yeah. Right now. Instant, <laughs> I know. It doesn't work like that. She goes, baby work. steps. And I go, mm -hmm. It's baby probably steps. the thing I say the most, baby steps, because it's true. That's well, I've never tried to do the same thing. Bring him down to re and that calms him and kind of like, because his brain's prior zooting a thousand miles an hour. And you're like, hey, relax, enjoy what you just did. You're doing great. You're on a path. You're going to reach the destination. You know, and I think that's yeah. a great thing. They also, that's common with ADHD as well. Yes. Because they were like, even if you just do, you did it today. Sexy thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, uh, you, you were like, oh my gosh, that's so, I, like, congratulations, so good. And I'm like, it seemed insignificant, just whatever it was. And then I'm like, I did do good. <laughs> <laughs> I am a good boy. I'm a good noodle. <laughs> and it's like that kind of thing is important in that. in that dynamic. Yeah. I also love that your buns are just above the headphones. I've been trying to figure, I tried to figure out what to do with these things the whole time. <laughs> it's like the headphones that have the kitty ears, and I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know what to do with these. So anyway, to mine, mine I'm an oversharer. I'm sorry. Yeah, your turn. No, it's okay. I like to hear what you have to say. Oh, it was really good. I like <laughs> so yeah, I found myself like, you know, you, you get into deep conversations sometimes and sometimes you go a little too deep. You peel back a couple of things mm -hmm. and then you leave the conversation and you're like, <laughs> Oh my god, why did I I'm say I'm naked. That? Oh, why did I say <laughs> that? Like, oh, it's funny. like that Homer Simpson yeah. thing where he shrinks into the bushes. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, oh, this yeah. is how I bushes. feel. Or like, you know. That's what I thought. She was like, I'm naked. And I go, yes. the Homer Simpson thing? Yes. You, know, you get a little exactly tipsy that. and then you start like saying too much. And then you wake up and you're like, why the fuck did I say that? Mm -hmm. Like, even, I'm sure even just talking today, I'll wake up tomorrow and be like, why did I say that on the podcast? Like, oh my <laughs> god. But. It'll be a while. I won't post it for a while. <laughs> it's just I, I always have some type of regret when I share things with people. I'm like, I feel like I overshare sometimes. Maybe I give people a little bit too much information about myself. I feel like they can come back to, like, bite me in the ass sometimes yeah. if I overshare a little yeah. too much. Like, at Depending work. Depending on who, who it yeah, is. Yeah, at work or with my parents. Is that a thing? Overshare? Oh, yeah. 100%. You give your en enemies ammunition. Like, for example, oh, I can relate to the man. You guys are making me self reflect really bad right now. Like, we I'm love like, a good self reflection. I'm toxic. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 Cut that. Cut that. Yeah, cut that. No, cut we, that, no, cut no. Shut it no. down. Like, yeah. I do both of these things. <laughs> but I, I can relate to that where I was talking to a therapist once and I just kind of went too much what was in my head. Mm. And then next thing you know, I'm almost getting committed. I'm like, yeah, oh, psych maybe, word. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't. That's oversharing. I, I, you know, some stuff you got to leave to yourself. Because you know, like a society. you guys have different therapists, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I had one. Well, no, no, no. I so I had one. I get so about 22, 23. It was after the ex situation that we both mutually know, and I just started drinking myself to crazy, and then crazy led to well, I don't want to be here anymore. So I go, if suicide was ten, like a ten ring ladder, I'm on nine, and then I call people, 
And then I'm like, is it not making any sense? But I'm like, I don't want to be here anymore. And then my parents like, FBI, bust through the door. <laughs> and I'm like, how do you guys care so quick? They're like, it's been 45 minutes. We drove a long way. And so they take me back. And then I start talking to like, a, it's the doctor who can prescribe meds. Psychiatrist. God, I love that. <laughs> and, uh, I knew you were going with it. I'm sorry. And he goes, great. We're going to give you a shit ton of like SSRIs. And then I did this hmm. for about four months. And then I slept for like 13 hours a day, but never got any sleep sleep, but I was asleep. And then after that, I found MMA and I go, ah, oh, damn, I feel lost. Cause I was like, you know what? I might as well. Cause I thought I was going to go in there and just get the shit kicked out of me. So I go, well, I shouldn't be here anyways. I might as well go figure out how to like feel confident. Them too. <laughs> and, yes. Um, and on, it's crazy that that decision from that point at 23, 22, 23 led to here and like awesome people like the both of you. Mm. And, you know, I can't plan for that. No amount of motion or success or whatever can plan for that. Um, but it's just, I, I lost where I was going. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, but... Fuck me sideways, dude. <laughs> it wasn't even there. I was like, I'm good. You're just reaching. I am. It tied into something. It's okay. You, you were talking about how... Silence. <laughs> okay, we're good. I found it. <laughs> <laughs> I was well, trying to put you back on track. To find it. Oh, good, good, good. Go did ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yep. Yes. <laughs> I was asking, did you get it? Yeah, no, go ahead. <laughs> you said you got it. <laughs> this is a good one. I got I, it. I'm loving this right now. This is good. I, I really like that. I really like you talking about how basically being in such a bad mental state yeah. ended up slingshotting you down the right direction. You know, yeah. like, you know, I can relate to that. Like, because after what happened with my son, mm -hmm. I was at a, a very similar point where I'm like, what am I doing here? Yeah. I'm supposed to go delete people and go, you know, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm mad and, and I don't want to be here anymore. And I hate these people and it's what I want to do. That's yeah. where I was mentally. You know, oh, I found it. There you go. I knew you would. Go Dang. ahead. Now you, I'm okay. passing no. back. <laughs> Thank you. And we were talking about therapists, right? Yeah. So then they were like, you need to see a therapist. So then I found one. And because I was an alcoholic, I would like drink all the time. So I was always like, this makes me not think about the other stuff or how much I fucked up. And this guy, I hope he doesn't watch this. <laughs> but there's no way he'd find it. I hope to God. But. He was an older dude, and he was my therapist. And he's sitting there, and he goes, I'm an alcoholic. And I go like this, I think I'm supposed to share first. <laughs> I'm supposed to talk first. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, flip my car, killed someone, manslaughter. He goes, but now I'm back. And I was like this, am I unpunked? Like, I legit That's too much I was, info for your therapist to be sharing with you. That was sentence three. <laughs> oh my gosh and I go well I wasn't that bad I would just like have a drink to go to bed have a drink to get up but at work I wouldn't drink because it's irresponsible and he goes don't know what that means I flipped my car killed someone what <laughs> are you drunk right now <laughs> <laughs> are you I didn't drunk say right shit now? she said that that's exactly what I was thinking <laughs> and I was like I go did you have a drink today <laughs> and he goes I have not but I want <laughs> and I go like this therapy is over and I just didn't share anything that'll after be $250 that. please <laughs> <laughs> it was $200 and I go mom I don't think this is gonna work and she goes why was it difficult and I go no I think he has a serious problem <laughs> <laughs> I and think I go, he needs a therapist how is he supposed to guide me program. I go he can't get rid of this manslaughter charge <laughs> As like, he's just cut out I was like, who gave him his license? I'm like, did he earn it in prison? <laughs> oh my god! Did he earn it in prison? Like, Probably. Ever? Yeah. They do stuff they like do. that. They do they? Do. Yes. yes. You're good to go out there and do it. And then the first client is me. And I'm like, oh no, no, <laughs> no. actually no. my first client. I'm a former alcoholic and I just got out of prison yesterday. My Thank name is Greg. In. I killed someone with my car and missed Hi, Greg. My favorite. My favorite is his office. He goes, he went like this out the window. He goes, yeah, I was actually right over there. <gasps> oh he goes, you know, because when I was trying to Mission Parkway, he goes, you know, sharks? Yeah. He goes, it was over there oh, at the four-way intersection. We played pool and uh, flipped the car. Oh, my 
So he was but it was that. Right it there. was so even, and I was like, I think I'm fine. I'm okay. I don't need therapy. Maybe that's his method. He goes, one and done. He goes, one and done. I'm just scary straight. And I was like, He's like, you're oh God. better off than I am. This is all we needed. That'll be 200 bucks. You're cured. But then I was like, oh, then I found another therapist. And I was like, this is not how it goes. It goes better that way. And uh, yeah, it's just different. But I don't, I, if there was a way to make it easier, because I think people get turned off by it really quick because they have someone like Greg who goes, I killed someone in my car. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I go, that's great. I drink a little. Yeah. It's like, that's very different. You shouldn't have said that. Yeah, yeah. And then I have someone who just asks me about my day, and I'm like, I just go, and then he writes it down. Mm-hmm. And then a month later, we're like, okay, we've said some of these things. Has it gotten better? Has it done this? And I'm like, this is what I thought it would be like. So I don't know. My, uh, I, I want to, oh, Breck. Dear God, this is my brain, isn't it? Breck <laughs> is a therapist. Clinical psychologist and a therapist who works with trauma and PTSD. Mm -hmm. And then he trains through that trauma. So he does the jujitsu. Oh, nice. And then so if it's like, um, I forgot the example, but it was if it was a a man who didn't feel confident enough, they would do combos on pad work. Right? And then they would talk. I like that. And if it was a woman who had been sexually assaulted, then with their permission, he would then recommend a jujitsu gym and then they would document her trajectory through training hmm. and then she's like i feel way better i heal he goes it's very uncomfortable in that the sounds beginning. really cool but hmm. he goes the, the it studies are insane and one of them uh backed ray because ray wants to get jujitsu in the school system instead of pe so it i forget i think he said there were they did one recently in abu dhabi and they took 100 kids 10 to 13 cut them in half 50 to pe 50 to jujitsu the total time was three months and like 24 hours worth of jujitsu. Those kids in that short amount of time could regulate their emotions, mm-hmm. externalize their problems, and then understand themselves. And then with the confidence they have now can solve almost any of the problems the other kids are having. And I go, what? I go, yeah, let's do that. So he gave me the study and I'm like, Ray, this is your backbone. This is scientific data. Like you could use this. And you know, there's just this culmination of, like, all of that. And then how the fuck did I get here? Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? And it's just, like, I just I connected with Justin, who was, like, we just want to do good stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's that simple. Make the world a better place. Yeah, and I'm, like, we can start. Let's go. Because I, I keep telling you, I'm, like, let's change the world. Mm-hmm. And I'm, like, let's Baby start with. Baby steps. Baby steps. And I go, Kansas <laughs> City, then. I go, Kansas City. And then that's led me to Ray. Red led me to you um also i have hilarious footage of you i didn't include it no, but no. it's me meeting <laughs> you and i'm holding the camera and trying to film and i just hear you going like hi i'm justin and i'm like and my camera tilts and i'm like hi nice to meet you and from that first encounter i'm like you are like so humble and at least the humility and all ray said was he's got a story and so i came in to talk to you and i'm just sitting there like Oh, it's probably just like something, something. Yeah, everyone's got a story. And you told me this story. And I go, I think I shit my pants. Like, you're the strongest person I know. I'm pretty sure yeah, I told you that I afterwards. Yeah, I, yeah. I think so. Too. I was like, I shit my pants. You're the strongest person I know. And it changed me to my core. So I don't know how, where I was going, but it rounded off to that one. <laughs> so your turn to talk because I've talked I, for I, a long time. I appreciate time. that. I, I think it's a lot of, as we were talking about self-reflection, you know, even like right now, we just did like we all just talked about our toxic traits. Like mm-hmm. that's self. Did you talk? You didn't talk about it yet. I did. She, she did. Overshares. That was it. That's your toxic that's thing. That's pretty toxic. No I'm playing. Oversharing. <laughs> um, it can be. It can. Yeah. Do be. I need to think of another one? Um, I guess it's per- and then the person. How, then that's person how I to person. About the isn't therapist it? and it zooped all around to that. That's mm-hmm. how we got here. Yeah, it's even just with You're like strangers. <laughs> <laughs> You're in charge. It's with strangers and people who like might not even be my real friend. Like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that a thing? Well, uh, to me, I don't know. I just always am like very receptive of wherever your background is. Yeah. So I don't. I Not everybody's think... like no. that though. No. Like my yeah, parents no. have used stuff against me that I've told them. I'll, like the I'll be open. The therapist situation I brought me. up, I overshared what was in my brain, and then I almost got committed. I had to pass a psychiatric evaluation to get out. Yeah, I told my. They made you take an exam. <sighs> yeah, oh, yeah. They actually committed me into the. Yeah. The, I had to call into work the next day and everything, and I could. It. I didn't get out to like two o'clock in, in the morning 
and I had to pass a psychiatric event. I mean, I switched Dude. up the psychiatric, but I had to remember like, okay, I think I overshared. You know, oversharing yeah. to the wrong people. It could be somebody who's aiming to like, oh, you guys are, you're not toxic. She can overshare to you and you're going to be, she's in a okay. safe place. Yeah. yeah. I but go, if okay. you were a narcissistic piece of garbage, you would use all of what she, like she, that other story she mentioned about, she told him about her cheating in that last mm-hmm. relationship. He used that as a weapon against her. So that's where the mm-hmm. oversharing. Yeah. Not remember something I wanted to share. A toxic trait. So I guess remember? with you, it's not a toxic trait, yeah. but if she does it with people that aren't, and her close, it can be a toxic trait. I do yeah. to almost everybody. I just am very an open book and almost too open of a book, I guess. Would that be my say. toxic trait? Yeah, I probably too. Probably. I share that one. Well, no, I meant like, so if you overshare with me and I go like this, okay, I understand you as a person. Is that toxic? No. 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 Okay. That's unto- That's anti-toxic. Oh, would it be toxic for me to then think everyone else thinks the way that I think? Maybe. It could be. Because <laughs> then I'm like, oh my god. I gosh. think he's looking for a red flag for himself right now. <laughs> I, I just want to like, make sure I'm like, I hey make guys, sure. I'm a... Don't look for one. You're great. Stop <laughs> <laughs> it. But I think that's a great self-reflecting right there is being able to yeah. self-analyze yourself. And that's how you grow. Like that's how relationships start to work is when you can look inward and fix yourself. And that's the same like... I'm I'm not just some strong, super strong person. I'm not just here because I'm just so powerful. I'm strong because I have the ability to self-reflect. I have the ability to be humble enough to look inward at myself and figure out what I need to fix. For example, when this ha- this situation happened with my son, I had to kill something in myself. I had to kill my ego. Mm. I had to kill it completely because if I didn't, I was going to hurt people. Yeah. I, I lost my mind. You know, I didn't feel like I had anything left. You know, and, and so that's it, it took me self-reflecting and figuring out, OK, why do I want to hurt these people? Why do you know I had to take out the human in me, mm-hmm. you know, in order to still be here? Yeah. You know, and so I think that's with in relationships and with your self-growth and with, with things like that. So that self-reflection is everything. Well, we all thank you very much because we love you so much. Yeah. Both of you. Thank yeah. you. I'm so glad I got to get to know, I mean, everybody a little bit yeah. better. Thank you guys for everything. Yes, yeah. I say that because I have to urinate. <laughs> oh, me too. I have to race you there. You race you there? Okay, great. We'll oh, end it no. here. P R P P. That's all. That's oversharing. I, it is, but I'm I'm tightening the muscles so I don't piss my pants. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you guys for coming in and talking. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks for, having, thanks for us. having us. We we're gonna be old folks. I'm, I'm telling excited. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> She grabbed my kneecap. <laughs> she grabbed my kneecap. <laughs> That's my, so happy. That's my you. thing. I'm supposed to grab your kneecaps. <laughs> no, I'm upset. Mm. I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I gotta go to bed. I'm right. so sorry. <laughs> bye, guys. Bye, bye. That was fun. That was good. Yeah, I love that.